folks and welcome back to another action-packed episode of Downhill Smooth Tarmac. In this episode we're going to be taking to the bikes and checking out what I believe personally is the best route in the UK for a bikepacking beginner. Now in all honesty we're not bikepacking on this trip we're just doing it out and back. So we've got somewhere to stay when we get to Hunstanton because we are doing the Pedder's Way. That's it. Anyone tells you that Norfolk is flat, it's not. It's got some lumpy bits in it. You'll see in the video. We're going to be taking it on. It's 50 miles approximately between Thetford and Old Hunstanton on the coast or vice versa. Uh, we're going to take on both and I'm going to talk you through the highs and lows and why I think this is such an accessible adventure if you've only just got your hands on a gravel bike. So without further ado, we're going to cut to me in a B&M car park in Thetford because me and Chops forgot to buy water bottles. But before that, roll the credits, take a look at the Pedders Way in Norfolk. Well, good morning, you wonderful people, and welcome back to Downhill Smooth Tarmac. You join me outside, you can't tell, but I'm outside the legendary B&M Bargains in Thetford in Norfolk. Yeah, we're riding the Pedders Way today, and it hasn't started off the way we might want, because me and Chops both forgot water bottles. Anyway, B&M's come to the rescue. Stick with us. We're going to have an amazing ride today. Weather's good, it's cold, all that stuff. Going to take you along. Head his way there and back. Two days. Don't miss it. Here we go. Roll. Okay, so let's start with the basics. The Pedder's Way officially runs from Nettishall Heath to Wells next to the sea, or some say Old Hunstanton. As you can see, we're starting from Thetford, which is just a few miles down the road from Nettershaw, purely for logistical reasons, and it seems to be where most people start the ride. We're blessed by good weather today, and the one thing that we picked up on straight away was just how dry the trails were, considering all the rain we've had lately. The trails still felt quite loose, dusty and sandy, which is obviously the way the ground lies in Norfolk. And the first piece of real trail that we encounter as we leave Thetford towards Nettishall is this piece of permissive bridleway. Sorry, byway. And that's important and will be relevant through a lot of today's ride. As you can see, it's loose, it's sandy, and there's some deep ruts. They're gonna get the blood pumping and get you focusing on the day ahead. I'm sorry to drag you from the action straight away at such an early stage, but I should probably explain that the mount that I use, the out front mount that I use on the on one, snapped. The uh, alloy just failed completely, bits went everywhere. I cried, got upset, had to be consoled, not really. Um, had to wait until a suitable break for us to uh, use a different mount that David made, 3D printed for us to go on the stem uh, for the Insta360 X3 that I'm using for filming on this if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, so we lost a few miles on the way out, but we got it all on the way back. So without further ado, back to the action like this. Exciting times. Exciting, exciting, exciting times. Fix me GoPro mount with another one. And we're off. We're going. We're gonna do some do some riding. Now we're how many miles are done? 27? Yeah. 27 miles done. We're back on camera. Let's do this. Here we go. Getting in the mix. 
What's up? Oh no! Oh, Jason! You got a flat tire, me, old mate. We're getting back on the pedal's way to stop and do your tire. You can't carry on like that, mate. You're going to go out the side door. Some real good squishy. Do you want to? <laughs> I think you might need to stop and sort that. Yeah. It's as flat as a pancake. So with the repairs done, we're back on the trail at Swatham, having fixed the camera into a different place so we can carry on and all that jazz. Let's talk briefly about punctures. You're going to get them on this trail. It's inevitable. At this time of year, not only have you got thorns to contend with as usual, but the trails are very flinty in places. There's lots of sharp stone that can catch you out. It reminded me a little bit of King Alfred's Way in that regard, that you can get a neat little cut. And that cut is going to make light work of either any inner tube or tubeless repair. So don't forget, bring your inner tubes, your patch kit, and your bacon strips for those running tubeless. Oh yeah, and weather is another thing to bear in mind. Being Norfolk, it's almost always windy. Uh, as you can see from the clips before, it was real windy. Um, other than that, we had some freak hail, as you could see. Uh, nobody was expecting that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the comedy value of it pelting me in the face. And then, within minutes, we're leaving Castle Acre here, just a mile on down the trail. And it's blue skies and sunshine once again. You'll find on the Pedder's Way that a lot of the trail is this kind of cart road double track. And a lot of it is, as I've mentioned before, byway. It's open to all traffic. So you do find sections where you get very deep ruts caused by 4x4 vehicles and motocross bikes. You can see it here. As a beginner, this is going to give you a real challenge. It's going to give you something to think about. It's going to focus your mind and you are going to have to be careful. Take care on those bits of trail. Make sure that you don't get stuck into those deep ruts, bash your pedals and go flying. Another thing to be aware of out on the Pedders Trail is farm traffic. You're going to get a lot of it. Be polite, get out of the way, they're working, you're not, that's the way I see it. But just be aware, you're flying down a trail, you might come head to head with a farmer, busy on the land, as they say.
Okay, so somewhere around the Sedgeford area, you will glance something of the Sandringham Estate and you'll hit this double track. This is used by all traffic again, uh, whether they're supposed to or not, I'm not sure, I couldn't find any signs. This is a section that, although these are the nicer bits, there's some parts here that you're not going to enjoy, in my personal opinion. It's been overridden by, basically by enduro and motocross bikes, causing deep ruts, which mean that the, means that the going gets really, really slow at times. I've ridden this section on a fat bike with 4-inch tyres and a gravel bike with 38C tyres, neither proved as a great option for this section and it is if you're riding out from the Thetford end it can be a bit of a tiring end to the ride I'll be honest but there are some good bits still to be had and there's a couple of options to peel off for a pub around I think it's Great Massingham area but something to make note of if you're going to be riding it from the Thetford side. At this point in the ride, we've peeled off now the Pedder's Way at Ringstead because we've chosen to stay in Hunstanton in a static caravan for the night uh, through Airbnb as it was the simplest option for us because we were planning the out and back. And actually, it actually provided a couple of great bits of trail to bring us into Hunstanton itself. So it didn't disappoint, even though we didn't get a chance to dip a wheel in the sea this time an old on Stanton or Wells next to the sea. And rolling neatly into the caravan park that is us done for day one. All that's left to do is sleep, get up and ride it back again. What could possibly go wrong? Well, good morning from a breezy, windy Hunstanton. As you saw from the video, we finished the Pedder's Way last night. What a great ride it was. It was a bit of a tough finish, but it was all good. Today, we're riding back. So we're leaving the site shortly, where we've just had a caravan overnight. We're going to get on. I'm going to cut out the Sandringham area because the ruts are just awful. And we don't really want to ride them again, so... Let's see how we get on. Let's stick with this. We're going to do it back the other way, heading back for Thetford. Let's go on with it. So for our return route, we sat the night before and decided to cut out the Sedgeford area of that double track we spoke about. Not one of us felt the need to ride it back the other way. So we actually found some road and some trail to bring us round that and give us a chance to see just a little bit more of what this part of Norfolk has to offer. So why not? It's our ride, it's our adventure. And something that you might want to think about yourselves when you're planning, if you're going to do this as an out and back.
So this is the point in Sedgeford where you'd normally take a right and get on to the first piece of that double track trail. Instead, we took these beautiful, quiet country lanes with some amazing views. And before we knew it, we were back anyway on the Pedder's Way. And with that, we're back on the Pedder's Way. We cut out the lumpy, rutted, crappy bit. With a healthy tailwind, we are flying back on this return route. And we're already, as you can see at this point, back almost at Castle Acre. And this is a spot on the Pedder's Way that deserves a special mention. So not only do you get a good mile or so of descent as you head back towards Castle Acre, what awaits you is a really beautiful little place with, you know, remains of a castle in the middle of the road, as you do. It's also a great little spa shop, plenty of history, if you like that kind of thing, coffee shops, places to stop, and probably one of my favourite little bits of the trail, as you can see here, going down by the river it's just cool it's pretty and on my last trip it was nicer and warmer and we actually sat down here for an hour or so just taking it in it's a real nice spot Man, I wish I just got that on camera. That's the nicest man walking his dog ever. Chatting to us, asking how far we're going, saying good luck, well done. More people like that in the world, please. Awesome. Back to Swaffham, the halfway point already here. And what awaits you is just one of the best bits of single track trail on the whole ride, particularly if you're riding it from the coastal side because it's got a slight gradient downhill and you can absolutely fly. 
It is beautiful, sublime, smooth, single track. If you don't enjoy this, you're not riding the bike right, I guess. Just enjoy. It is probably one of my favourite parts of the entire ride. Just look at it. Fast, flowing, grip for days, everything you need. So the next point we're coming to on the trail is Shadwell. And this is where we need to make a little safety note for you because something we came across is there is a railway crossing at Shadwell. It's got lights, it tells you when it's safe to cross. If the lights are out, please make sure that you pick up the phone and you ask for permission to cross. We did this and had to wait as a train flew past us that we would have had no chance uh, of spotting otherwise. Uh, as you'll see in a sec though, we did give John a little bit of stick for his official tone. We are all clear of the crossing, we're all clear of the crossing, over. <laughs> this is Shadwell calling Cambridge, Shadwell for Cambridge, over. This is Shadwell 359. Get off the line. Get off the line. This is an emergency. <laughs> so with that Mickey taking done, so is the ride almost. And there's one more thing to take note of. Do you remember we mentioned about some of the trails being permissive byway? That means that you're going to come up against this. That's right, motorcyclists, motocrossers and enduro riders. Some of them are going to be more accomplished than others and more considerate than others, just like anything else. Just be aware, keep left, keep your eyes peeled and you will get used to sharing the trail with them. It is just a little unusual, particularly for a new rider, and they do explain why you get these deep ruts, because there's an awful lot of motorised transport using these trails as well. Okay, so there you have it. Two days of riding, both directions of the Pedders Way, 110 miles approximately, and a lot of fun had, despite tasty headwinds and deep, rutted trails. I still like it, I've done it twice now, as I mentioned before, love it. It is, for a beginner, if you want to feel like you're having an adventure, that you're out there, you're in the thick of it, then 
the Padders Way could just be the thing that does it for you. Book an overnight campsite in Hunstanton, something like that. It doesn't take much just to nudge off the trail at Ringstead, this is what we did, as you saw, or Ringstead, because they shorten everything in Norfolk. And, and, and just book somewhere, book a caravan, book a B&B, &B, whatever. I'm sure logistically you people have the technology to sort that out. It's a great ride. I have a couple of other contenders that may be waiting to knock it off its perch, but we shall wait and see because it gives me an excuse to ride them. Uh, I've already attempted chops with a, another cheeky little route that I've found, which is a loop. Stand by for that one. I'm going to sign off and I say that I hope that your next ride is downhill with smooth tarmac. Keep your wheels spinning, keep your rubber on the road, keep your knobblies on the trail. Go out, ride for an hour, ride for a day, have an adventure, go somewhere, do it from the doorstep. We love all of that. If you get a minute, it would be absolutely amazing if you'd like and subscribe. It really does help me grow my channel. If you like all things cycling, I think I've got it covered. If you like a bit of running, <laughs> I've got some videos of that. Uh, they're not the most popular thing I make, but they're out there. But yeah, if you could take a minute to like and subscribe, that would be amazing. Uh, but, and it's a very big but, it's the kind of trunk space you want in a late model car, but don't let it get in the way of you getting out and riding your bike. Until next time, thanks for watching, folks.